Thank you and welcome to Butterflies Australia. This is the second part in our three part guide to how to use Butterflies Australia. This talk covers the field guide in the app. So the field guide uses many of the same controls as the uh, recording sightings functions on the home screen, but it has um, a slightly different look and feel to it. So um, if you look at the, the first page, the home screen, it has, as I said, very similar functionality. Um, and you can still navigate your way around by using the search bar. And you'll see here we've typed in Jezebel and it's bringing up any species that have Jezebel in the name. Uh, you can still collapse the family view um, or restrict the visible species based on uh, location or um, based on things that are recorded where you are or not recorded where you are. If you scroll down the field guide and you want to get back to the top very quickly, you can use this, this um, slightly transparent white arrow at the bottom and that will very quickly return you to the top. It only appears when you've started scrolling beyond the top of the screen. You can click on an individual species pane to take you to the profile page for that species. So in this case, we've got the Black Jezebel profile. You can see that there's a, uh, a common name up the top to make sure you know what species it is you're looking at. A profile image, um, and you can actually navigate through the, uh, the various images that might be there for that species uh, by swiping left or right. You can see there's a dot a set of dots down the bottom that indicate the number of species, the number of photos in the in the gallery for that species and your position in it. It has the photo author. And this blue bar here is uh, the flight period. In this case, black Jezebels are known to fly all year round, and so all of the uh, all of the months are in blue. But uh, for species that have a more narrow flying window, months that they wouldn't be flying are greyed out. Um, up in this top right corner, you can see the, the same symbol that you can see in the species list under the surveys. Uh, this one, the target with the dots in it, means that it's known from the area that you're currently standing in. If you scroll down a bit, you can see the profile text. So information about the um, scientific name, the size of the butterfly, and for those species that we've added the content, um, descriptions on um, what the butterfly looks like and the habitat it uses and any behavioral quirks it might have. And we've tried for each species not to replicate the content of a field guide, but to just give enough information that you could identify that species in the field when compared to other similar species. Then finally, all the way at the bottom, you've got a species range map, and this is clickable too, so you can actually bring that up to a full screen view on the, on the app. So if you clicked on the profile photo, it would take you to the species gallery screen. Um, and you can see it gives not just the the author, but also information about the the photo that might have been included um, in terms of the description, as well as the the stage of life cycle for the for the butterfly that's depicted. And again, the dots on the bottom of the screen show your position in the gallery, and you can swipe left or right to move through. Uh, once you're in the photo gallery screen, and this doesn't work on the species profile, but on the on the gallery screen, you can actually pinch and push to zoom in and zoom out. And you use this uh, X up in the top left corner to close the gallery and go back to the species profile screen. When you click on the range map at the bottom of the species profile, it brings up a screen that looks like this. And it shows you a bunch of information about the range and distribution of the species. So the range of the species is in green. And 
the blue dot is your current location. Blue pins are your personal records that you've recorded with the device you're on. So if you've recorded that species on your phone, it will appear as a blue pin on the map. The red dots are other people's records. So when you choose in the, um, the account management cog in the top right corner of the home screen and you choose sync data, it will actually download a certain amount of verified data for each species, which will appear on this range map so that you can see where other people have recorded this species. And that's the, the green boundary represents a, an overall range, but the red boundary should actually represent actual habitat for the species, places where it's actually been recorded. Again, you can navigate the map by pinching and pushing to zoom in and zoom out. You can turn on and off data layers using this uh, stack of um, squares in the icon up the top right. That lets you choose to use terrain maps or satellite imagery um, to uh, to view the um, to view the map as an overlay over. You can zoom to your current location, so that takes the map into the full full zoom extent. Um, and then you can either go to the, the, the whole range of the species or to the full extent of the map. Um, so just some very convenient navigation buttons where a species doesn't occur across the whole of Australia, it will zoom in a lot more easily and smoothly to, um, to those sections. Then finally, you can use the X in the top left corner to close this and go back to the species profile page. So when you zoom in, um, you can see this is sort of what it looks like a bit more um, with the, the red being the sightings that other people have had verified, the blue pins being where you've seen the species and the blue dot being where you currently are now. So I'm going to finish this section of the talk on the app with just a little bit of information on how to find and identify butterflies. So first of all, we'll just quickly go through the, the different families that occur within Australia, um, because we do actually have most of the families, but not all of the butterfly families in the world. Um, so we have the Papillionidae or swallowtails are the big showy butterflies that you tend to uh, think of. Most people would think of a swallowtail when you say, what, what do you think of when you think of a butterfly? This is things like your orchard swallowtail is one of the most common butterflies on the east coast. Um, it includes things like the the birdwing butterflies, which are quite famous um, in the Australasian region, Australia and Papua New Guinea. And um, one of the one of the common but not always present features for this is uh, that they have these big tails coming off the end of their wings, um, and that's. Uh, that's where obviously the family gets its name from. Second is the Hesperidae or skippers. These guys are quite different from your usual body plan for a butterfly. They hold their wings generally um, in this sort of double V shape that you can see in the left and rightmost photo at the bottom of the screen. But some species do hold their wings flat like this region skipper in the middle. Um, and they fly generally extremely fast um, to the point that you can barely see them in motion when they're flying. And they have a generally have a habit of flying around an area and settling in the same spot or similar spots each time um, to mark out a territory. And they're predominantly species are orange or brown, but uh, you do get some exceptions like the Regent Skipper, which is quite brightly colored. The Pieridae, which are the whites and yellows, um, it's a general rule of thumb that if you see a white or a yellow butterfly in Australia, it probably belongs in this family. However, there are also a number of species which are black or grey um, or multicoloured that, um, that don't necessarily fit that entirely. Um, many of the commonest butterflies in Australia, like your caper white in the middle at the bottom, um, are, are found in the in the Pieridae family and uh, lemon migrant is another hi highly abundant um, east coast species which is the one on the left at the bottom there. 
Nymphalidae uh, or brush-footed butterflies. This is a, uh, in terms of uh, a group of butterflies, this is probably the most grab bag version of the families. It doesn't have any good rules of thumb as to what makes a butterfly fall into the nymphalids. Um, you can have blue ones, orange ones, brown ones, black ones, white ones. Um, there's spots and there's stripes and there's all kinds of weird and crazy patterns. So uh, possibly the best rule of thumb for Nymphalidae is if it doesn't seem like it fits in one of the other families, it's quite possibly a Nymphalid butterfly. Um, some of the best known uh, species that fall into this family are things like your monarch butterfly, the, uh, the self-introduced species from the US, which is famous for its mass migrations. Um, and your common egg fly in the middle, um, which is a, a, a black butterfly with white and purple spots uh, in the males, is also another very well-known butterfly from this group. The Rio Dinidae or metal marks is a, a group of species which we only have one of in Australia, but can be quite common in other parts of the world. Um, the one species that occurs in Australia, the Harlequin metal mark, is found on Cape York only. And then finally, the Lycenidae, the blues. This is one of the most abundant families that we have um, in Australia. And they're typically small and bluey grey, um, although there are lots of exceptions to that rule. Um, and the upper wing surfaces are often quite spectacularly coloured, as you can see in the, the butterfly in the middle at the bottom there. Um, while the name for the family is given as blues, there are lots that aren't. There are some that have orange upper wings or red. Um, there's lots of butterflies called jewels that have lots of different quite iridescent colours to them. Um, so blues can be quite a misleading name for the family, but uh, a lot of them are also quite drab, sort of greys and browns and, uh, and quite small, and you might even mistake them for moths if you weren't paying attention. And finally, the last the last group that we have depicted here is the unknown group, which includes day flying moths and unidentified butterflies. And this is just a bit of a catch all because of the way the apps put together. We have this section in the field guide to match the section in the species list for submitting sightings. Um, it gives you a bit of a description of what uh, we're looking for with those if you're submitting an unidentified butterfly photo. Um, and a little bit about day flying moths. So that's the end of this talk. Uh, this was part two of our three part series. The next video that we're going to put together is going to be about how to use the website and that's going to focus quite heavily on how to access your data that you've collected and submitted and what you can do with it once you've accessed it.